Welcome to Science for Schools. Today we're going to be comparing the fundamental frequency of a stretch string with its tension. So here's what we'll need, a sonometer, which is just a stretch string uh, at either end. We have a tuning peg and a spring balance, uh, and it's being held over these two things called bridges. We also need a selection of tuning forks that we already know the frequencies of. So here's our setup then. We have our sonometer here. I have my selection of tuning forks. Um, now the way to set this up usually is to make sure the length of the string that you're actually using between the two bridges is about a third the length of the entire string. So the total length is about 75 centimeters here. And th this is between these two bridges. I've set to about 25 centimeters. So what we have to do is figure out how do we get this string to have the same frequency as, for example, this tuning fork. This is a D288 hertz. So you can tell what the frequency of the string is by just tapping on it, just plucking the string. Um, so how do you know if that's a D288 hertz? Well, if you're musically inclined, you might just be able to tell by ear. You can hear what the tuning fork is like if you bang it off something. I don't know how well you can hear that. Um, so you can tune it by ear, or more likely you'll have to use what's called a chromatic tuner. Uh, so I have one on my phone here. You can get physical ones, or you can just download a chromatic tuner app. Uh, they work pretty well either way. So if I now play the string, the chromatic tuner is going to tell me roughly where that is. If I play the string now, the chromatic tuner is telling me that's a little bit too low. So I can tune it up a little bit. That's about a C. Tune it up a bit farther. D flash, a little bit more. And we get closer and closer to D. Now these do pick up harmonics and overtones as well, so it's a little bit difficult to get it exactly right. But once you're in the right area, the way to fine tune is to take a little V shape of paper, which we call a paper rider, and rest it on the string. Just, it has to be quite small, otherwise this isn't going to work. You take your tuning fork and get it to hum, and rest it on one of the bridges. And you can hear an extra little hum that is the string resonating with the tuning fork. If it's at the right frequency, if you have the tension of the string right, it'll resonate. And the better you have the tension, the more closely it's going to resonate. So, it's resonating quite strongly at the moment. You might be able to see the paper rider is vibrating a little bit. And that's because the string is vibrating now with resonance. But to get it absolutely right, we can just change the tuning a little bit. And the more we see the paper writer vibrate, the closer we are to the right tension. So make little adjustments at a time. So it's not vibrating as much as it did before. So I've tuned the wrong way, I suspect. So tune down a little bit. And you might have seen that the paper writer actually jumped off. Now, just to be absolutely sure about this, I'm going to try it again at the same frequency. Sometimes just putting the tuning fork down. If you put it down a bit too hard, it can make the paper writer jump off. So let's just try and make it resonate off again. Uh, it's vibrating quite strongly, but it's not quite jumping off yet. Which makes me think that... I have to tune it slightly more. Okay, jumped off again. Since I've tuned it since the last time it jumped off, I'm just going to try again just to be sure. Yeah, so it jumped off again. So now we have exactly the right frequency for this string compared to the tuning fork. And we can read from the, the spring balance over here that this is at about 6.5 newtons. So we repeat the experiment now with each of our other tuning forks. We've got five of them in this case. 
So first of all, we do some coarse tuning. Get our chromatic tuner out, or if you're musical, you can just use your ear. And we're looking for an F341.3. It's good to start at, at a, either the low end or the high end, and then work your way either up or down, depending. So we know F is higher than D. It's 341 hertz, so we're going to tune up from the 288 hertz that was D. And we're going to try and get to F. A little bit more, we're getting close. Okay, that's at about the right level. Again, we're gonna have to switch out the chromatic tuner for the fine tuning method with the paper writer. Okay, so I've got the paper writer on now. And we're gonna see if we can get it to jump off. It's vibrating quite strongly. It's not quite enough to make it jump off. So try and tune it in one direction or the other. Oh, jumped off. Once again, just to be absolutely sure I'm getting this right, I'm going to put the paper writer straight back on, not change anything, and see if I can get it to resonate off again. It's not quite working. Not quite right, so I need to tune it up a little bit. I think. And it's getting worse now, so I'm tuned back down. Let's see how I get on. Mm, too far, I think. I just jumped off again. That one took a bit of effort, but it worked. So we'll try that again. No, vibrating a bit, but not quite enough to make it jump off. Oh, okay, so it jumped off again. Let's see if we can get it to do so without any adjustments. Yeah, perfect. So I jumped off twice. I didn't change the tension in between those two. So that is at between 9 and 9.5 Newtons. I think closer to 9.5. Uh, so once again, switch up to the next tuning fork. This one is a G384 Hertz. So we're going to be tuning upwards anyway. Use our chromatic tuner to get as close as we can. Again, it does pick up some overtones and some harmonics. So you have to be quite careful. And... Okay, we're pretty much on G now. So we switch out for the paper writer, do the fine tuning. Uh, very little shaking this time. So let's tune down a bit. So we had the paper writer fall off just there. Once again, gonna double check. Yeah, so we're twice in a row. That's good enough. So it looks like G is at about, I'll call that 12 Newtons. Move up one. Now we have a B that's 480 Hertz. Incidentally, you have to be very careful that the length of your string stays the same the whole time. I'm using a bit of blue tack just to make sure the bridges stay in place. Uh, 
Now, this is a big enough gap between G and B, so I'm going to have to increase the tension quite a bit here, I think. We're at about B flat now, just a little bit more will take us to B. Yeah, okay. So the chromatic tuner says we're at B. And now we go back to the paper writer to do the fine tuning. So again, you can kind of hear the resonance happening, even if you don't see it on the paper writer. Oh, there we go. It's jumped off for the first time. Uh, I think I might have pressed the tuning fork down too hard. Not that one, so I'll just try one more and double check. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so it jumped off again. So that looks like, let's say, 19 newtons. So B is at 19 newtons. And I've got one more tuning for it to check. It's a C512 hertz. So let's see if we can get a C. Just slightly above the B, so it shouldn't take too much extra. There we go. So let's switch to the paper writer now. And let's see if we can get it to resonate. A bit of vibrating. Not quite as much as I would like. So, tune it down a little bit. Oh, jumped off. And we'll try again, just to double check. Yeah, okay, so there we go. C looks to be at 22 Newtons. 512 Hertz, 22 Newtons. Now we have our results. What can we actually do with them? Uh, so we have frequency measured in hertz and we have tension measured in newtons. And these two are not straight up proportional to each other, so there's a more complicated relationship going on. So take a look at the formula we have for this. We've got frequency is equal to 1 over twice the length of the stretch string times square root of tension over the linear density or the mass per unit length of the string. So we use the same string every time, so this mass per unit length, the linear density of the string is always the same. And we also intentionally tried to keep the length of the string the same each time. So we have one variable, that is the frequency, is equal to 1 over 2L times the square root of mu, and all of that is constant, multiplied by another variable. And so when you have one variable is equal to a constant times another variable, that means that it's proportional. So just looking at this, we should expect that the frequency is going to be proportional to the square root of the tension. But to verify this, we have to graph it. So if we're plotting one variable against another one, we need to decide which is going to be on which axis. Let's say, for example, we say that y is the frequency. Then we're going to have the slope is 1 over 2L times the square root of the mass per unit length. And then the x-axis is going to be the square root of the tension. So before we can graph this, we need to know exactly what the square root of the tension is in each case. And so here's just an extra column with those results in it, just square rooting the tension. Now we have that information, we can actually graph it. 
So this is what the graph of the frequency versus tension is going to look like. This is uh, the frequency on the y-axis measured in hertz. And this is the square root of the tension measured in square root newtons. Now we need to verify that this is a proportional relationship and to do that we need to see if we can get a straight line through the origin. So we know we get exactly one point right there on the origin. So try and extend it to go through those points and this one actually works out really quite well. You can see all of those points are really fitting that straight line very well. Now, the slope of this line is beyond the scope of the experiment, but it is something you might be asked to do in terms of analyzing your results. So, we know that the slope of this line is 1 over 2 times the length times the square root of the linear density. And so, if you work out the slope, you can then see if you can work out what the, the length is if you know the linear density, or you can work out the linear density if you know the length. For example, in the experiment that I just did, the length was 25 centimeters. So I'll leave that as an exercise to work out what the linear density of that stretch string was. But for the purposes of this experiment, we have done everything we need to do. We've investigated the relationship between the frequency and the tension of the string. And it turns out that the frequency is proportional to the square root of the tension. So thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next episode. Thank you.